Hello everyone, Colin Kanat here for Woodwork Web. Uh, you're probably wondering why I'm standing here with my broken 23 gauge pinner. And any of you who watched my last video where I was putting together the knife block, you'll know that the very first nail that I, or pin, these are headless pins that these take, 23 gauge headless pins. The first one that I put in, it jammed and then I had to stop and move over to, because I, I'd already set the glue, and I had to move over to my 18 gauge, which is a little bit bigger. Uh, I like the 23 gauge because it, it's a headless pin, and it just puts just a little needle uh, hole in the wood. This one has, of course, a little bit bigger size. So I thought today, things in the workshop don't always go as, <laughs> as you would like them to go and that's part of my woodworking channel too. Sometimes I stop in the middle of things and do something completely out of the ordinary. In this case, uh, I don't know what this is like. I'm going to take this apart and here's why. When I went to put the pinner away, I noticed that there was a couple of Allen wrenches and there was a, a spare sort of plunger thing in here and some piece of plastic and I have no clue what this will be for but I thought you know what um, it appears since they've given spare parts it appears that they expect that this plunger thing that's broken in mine right now is going to have to be replaced so they've actually provided a spare part and they've even given you the tools to do it can't be that hard well let's just we're going to jump in and see how we can if we can repair this thing Never had this apart before, so we'll uh, we'll have a look at it. Now there's two there's two different sets of of uh, cap screws here. I think that one goes through. So we'll take the top off. This should release that top plate. Yeah. Now it might just pop back now, and then it's all done. No, and I push it back. No, it's still not even moving. It, you know, when I look at it, it might be a little hard to see on camera, but it actually looks like it's twisted a little bit, which would be why it won't pop back. Even when I put some force on it, it's still not wanting to pop back. And there should be some sort of a spring in there to take that back. So um, this is what the replacement part looks like. This is what it comes with. So I assume the next thing we need to do is to get inside here. But I, I don't really know. So we're just going to, you know what, we're just going to go ahead and uh, pretend like we know what we're doing. And we'll take that off. Oh, that's not bad. That's probably the return spring. Now that really doesn't help me much because... And you can see that there's a seal in here as well. So I guess the next thing I'm going to need to do is take these two out here because clearly this isn't really doing anything for me. So. There's still nothing, um, it's still quite, oh, there we go, ah, here we go, okay, well, and there you can see in there, that looks very similar to the top of that, but it looks like it's stuck down in there, so I think I'm going to have to put a little bit of brute force on that and see if we can tap that out. It is possible that there's a pin still stuck in there that I can't, oh there we go, we're moving there a little bit now. There we go. Ouch. Yeah, let's
There. Aha. Uh -huh. There is a pin jammed in there. I thought there might be. Yeah, there's some bits of metal I can see in there as well. Well, let's uh, push that out. There's something to... And there it is. Well, there's the two pistons. This is the old one. And you can see that it looks like it's been kind of rounded over a little bit. Uh, this one is quite square, which I think that's obviously the way it should be because this one is brand new. Uh, and when we flip it over, you can see that there's a little bit of wear compared to this one. See how nice and straight this one is. Uh, and this one, you can see that there's quite a bit of wear at the very bottom. Now there really isn't any trick putting the new piston back in except that I want to make sure it's been rolling around in that box for a while that it's nice and clean because that's the seal that of course the air is going to want to stay behind and I just want to make sure that I oil it well and I'm going to oil this um, piston part too and just make sure when I put that in that it slides in nicely. I also want to check, and I've just done that, I wanted to make sure that these uh, chases were nice and clean in here. There wasn't any bits and pieces of metal or anything in there, uh, nicely cleaned out. And that should just run right down in there. There we go. Pistons in. And that's all the way down. All right, now we just put it back together the way we took it apart. Okay, let's turn that compressor on and see how that's going to work. Now I'm going to start off, I've just reset this, I'm going to start off by putting in some uh, much shorter pins in there. And you can see the little arrows are, they need to face down. Uh, other pinners, you don't need to do this, but some of these very fine ones that are headless, uh, you have to know which way they go on. Well, now comes the moment of truth. Can't really tell if anything went in there or not. I think there's something going in there, but I can't really tell. Oh yeah. Oh, it's doing a good job. There's the, there's the pin there. All right, let's undo that for a second. Let's put some longer pins in there. And when you put those pins in, they need to slide right into that slot. There they go. And we'll just put the lid on. Okay, yeah, that's good. I can't, still can't see them going in there. There's quite a bit of oil in there yet. I may have to uh, shoot a few nails just to clear that oil out of there because we won't want that going on our wood. I may have been a little overboard on my oil there, um, but that's working good. And that's what it's doing, so that's good. Well, off camera, uh, I drove another, oh, 10 or 12 uh, pins in there, and it did, in fact, clear the oil quite well. So now I'm getting nice, crisp, round holes, and I'm not getting any of the excess oil in there. So there, we all learned something on that one. Don't put too much oil on this. Uh, but, you know, when this failed uh, the other day when I was using it, I thought I was just going to have to throw it out because it, I didn't pay a lot for it and uh, it probably has run its cycle. Uh, but in fact, we actually did repair it. So it, it shows if you're a woodworker, there's probably a good chance that you can actually repair uh, and update and, and sort of fix some of the tools that you have as well. So I'm glad to be able to do that. Don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, we ask you to do that. 
like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, follow me on Instagram too. I'm actually starting to have a little bit of fun with Instagram. So uh, one of my uh, new things to play around with. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Keep on watching. Got lots of great stuff coming.